Hi guys, let's discuss current affairs. Here's today's first question. DAX is the stock exchange index of, uh, well, the answer is Frankfurt Stock Exchange. We're going to discuss um, stock exchange indexes in this particular class. Okay, um, let me take you geography wise. We start either in the west or in the east. Let's start maybe in the east, the sunrise in the east. So what you would do, what you could do in your books is to write uh, the name of uh, stock exchange, right? just write the name of the stock exchange or city if you wish. I would suggest just write stock exchange and then the remark, uh, index, next column, index. And uh, in case you wish to write, you could write remarks, third column. This won't come into play much of the talk, but you just write. We start, we said in the west, sorry, east, and we start with Tokyo. Tokyo Stock Exchange has an index. See, an index is a list of names of companies, list of names of companies. Now, to get its name on the index, a company has to have a listing agreement with the stock exchange. Only when the company has some, you know, this kind of agreement can its name appear on the index. Now, only when the name appears in the index can the shares of that company be bought and sold on that stock exchange. For example, if a company's name appears, if a company is listed on the National Stock Exchange of India, but not on the Bombay Stock Exchange, it simply means that while you can buy, sell shares of, buy and sell shares of company X on NSE, on the National Stock Exchange, you cannot do this on the BSE, that is the Bombay Stock Exchange. Okay? Now, um, you have Tokyo, the index at uh, Tokyo Stock Exchange, the index is called Nikkei, N-I-K-K-E-I. -K -K -E okay? Now, Nikkei has a full form, full name, you don't have to write, but you are, if you are the curious type, yeah. Um, I'm a curious person, so if you're the curious type, I would give you the full form, which is the name of a newspaper. See, remember, um, the name of a newspaper, Nikkei comes from the name of a newspaper. And this is uh, what it is, uh, that is, sorry, uh, Nihon, Keijan, Shimbun. That's how the word Nikkei comes. Hmm? Nihon Keijan Shimbun. From there, let's go to South Korea, where we have Seoul Stock Exchange. The E is silent. It is Seoul. Okay. Seoul, it's Kospi. The main index at Seoul Stock Exchange is Kospi, which is Korea Composite Share Price Index. Korea Composite Share Price Index. Okay, Korea Composite Share Price Index. Now let's come down and from there, let's travel to Hong Kong. Hong Kong. The main index at Hong Kong Stock Exchange is called Hang Seng, which is again the name of a newspaper. It's the name of a newspaper. From there, from there we can travel south, you know, down south to Singapore. Singapore. Singapore's uh, main index is called ST Index, which is again the name of a newspaper. ST is the name of a newspaper, and the name of the newspaper is Straits Times Newspaper. Straits Times. Okay. Now, uh, all the indexes, it is not true that all the indexes are named after famous newspapers. It's just that in the cases of um, Tokyo and um, Tokyo and Hong Kong and Singapore, we have got newspapers and there's one more uh, city like that. From there, we could travel to, let's come to India. Okay, you write India first here. Okay, below which, okay, below which you should write This is India and below this you could write A National Stock Exchange, Mumbai. It's in Mumbai. 
National Stock Exchange, Mumbai. Next, National Stock Exchange, Mumbai. Um, the index here is called Nifty. 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 In the remarks column, let's write a few points. Hmm? Point one or A. Nifty comes from NSE plus 50. The weighted averages of 50 stocks, companies, shares are taken and you know that's why the weight that's how the weighted average the index is calculated weighted averages n yeah you look at this n plus 50 is you remove this to nsc plus 50 is nifty that's how the name comes okay to calculate the index at uh, no, the sensex at bombay stock Exchange, you have 30 so 30 stocks weighted averages is sensex but in the case of nifty that is uh, national stock exchange main index it is um, you know 50 stocks next point india's largest stock exchange india's largest stock exchange by turnover by turnover india's largest stock exchange by turnover by turnover Hmm? Number three, established in 1992-93, Cool. So we got three major points. From there, the second one, Bombay Stock Exchange, Mumbai. Bombay Stock Exchange, Mumbai. See, Mumbai is the financial capital of India. Obviously, this is where you would find the stock exchanges, the major ones actually. Um, Bombay Stock Exchange, Mumbai. The index is called Sensex. Sensex. Hmm? Now, in the last column, remarks column, you write these things. Point one. Sensex stands for Sensex stands for Sensitivity Index Sensitivity Index of Share Price Usually we think it is Sensitive Index Actual full form is this Sensitivity Index of Share Price Okay, then second point, Asia's oldest stock exchange, Asia's oldest stock exchange, Asia's oldest stock exchange, dash, established July 1875 if you wish the precise date wish to go the 9th july asia's oldest stock exchange 9th july 1875 last point originally called originally called was it always called the bombay stock exchange no so originally called originally called the native the native stock and share brokers association the native stock and share brokers association okay so the use of the word native and the fact that it was established in 1875 simply means that it was meant only for Indians. It was meant only for Indians. That's why the word native. So that's a little about the Bombay Stock Exchange. See, if you write this in order, you know, things work. I like to follow order, but because of the want of space here, I normally write randomly. But if you look at this one, for example, this one, 
Now I normally go with a certain order, like the buttons on a shirt. Hmm? Chaliya, from India, let's go to Europe. And Europe, we can first go to Frankfurt. Frankfurt. If you do not know where is this, no issue. It's in Germany. Germany. Hmm? The index is DAX. You don't require the full form of, you know, Deutsche Aktien Exchange. You don't require that. Simply write DAX. And you should know, if you're a kind of person who loves Frankie, a vegetable Frankie, paneer Frankie, chicken Frankie, non veg whatever, meat Frankie, the word Frankie comes from Frankfurt. Okay. Yeah. From there, from the German financial center of Frankfurt to Milan. Milan is the fashion capital of the world and it is in Italy. Many people say Paris is the fashion capital. It's Milan. Okay. Milan is a fashion capital. Milan is a fashion capital. It's in Italy. The index here is called MIB. MIB. It is not men in black or men in blue. It is, you don't have to write, Mercator, Mercator Italiana Borsa. Chill. I'll tell you what is, what is it that you should know, not beyond that. Okay? I won't tell you because I know. I will tell you if it's important from the test point of view. Nothing more than that. From there, we could go to Paris which as you know is in France mm -hmm. and the index there is called CAC though of course now there is another index now okay CAC from mainland that is continental Europe will go across the English channel and go to let like, say London London okay London, my friends, is um, the financial center of the world. It's considered the financial center of the world. If you would want to know if there is a city that would be equivalent of London, it would be New York City. So New York City, London, Tokyo and Hong Kong would be four centers in the world that could you could say are the financial centers of the globe. London, New York, Singapore, oh, sorry, Hong Kong and Tokyo. Some say Singapore also, but four would be there. Yeah. Four are pretty famous and hubs basically, financial hubs. London Stock Exchange, the index is called FTSC. 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 First point. Pronounced. 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 FTSE, pronounced FTSE, that's how it is pronounced, it's not FTSE, it's FTSE, second one, FT stands for SE stock exchange, FT stands for financial times, financial times, it's in the, again it's the name of a newspaper, financial times, <coughs> then from London, Let's cross the Atlantic, go to New York City, New York. New York City is home to NYSE, 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 here in the remarks column you write, uh, I am so sorry, I am so sorry, I just went there with that FTSE, it is not NYSE. Uh, New York Stock Exchange, the index is called Dow Jones, Dow Jones, Dow Jones, that's the name of the index, Dow Jones. In the remarks column, you should write, nicknamed, nicknamed, Big Board, the Big Board, nicknamed Big Board, Big Board. So. Big board. Hmm. Okay. 
that's about it. Uh, hardly anything else. Uh, since you could be asked, sometimes you could just be asked on the offside. NASDAQ. The index is called NASDAQ 100. So what is NASDAQ? So in the last column you write National Association. National Association of Securities Dealers. automated quotation it's not pronounced quotation it's quo k w should come together quo okay it in fact three letters k w o so national association of securities dealers automated quotation Hmm. This is a little about stock exchange indexes. I just thought I would tell you a few things. Yeah, you know? that's why I always start with a question that would help us get a lot of information out of it. Hmm. So from here, let's go to the next one. Jagdish Khatter, who passed away recently, was a former managing director of Marty Suzuki. See. Maruti Suzuki was started as Maruti Udyog Limited. This is the original name of Maruti Suzuki. Maruti Udyog Limited. This is called, it was called MUL, M-U-L. It was a government of India company. It was a public sector enterprise. It was started as a public sector enterprise. It was a dream of Sanjay Gandhi. Okay. They, you know, the Maruti, that is named after Bhagwan Hanuman. Bhagwan Hanuman. And it is, um, you know, the technical collaboration came with from Suzuki Corporation of Japan. Over a period of time, the government of India began to divest its shares, began to sell its shares to, and the first right was given to, first right of purchase was given to, you know, Marty, uh, sorry, it was given to Suzuki Corporation of Japan. So slowly, you know, the government of India began to sell its shares and over a long period of time, it became a minority shareholder in Maruti Udyog. And that is how, when Suzuki became a majority owner, it changed the name to Maruti Suzuki India Limited, MSIL. This is India's largest, you know, uh, car maker, largest car maker. If you would look at its, uh, if I'm not wrong, its MD currently is Kenichi Asakawa. Kenichi Asakawa. That's the name of the MD, Kenichi Asakawa. Hmm. Mm. And this guy Khattar was there for you know, more than a decade. He was there for a long, long time. Quite instrumental in um, making Maruti a major power. But of course, there are critics of his, uh, you know, his rule, you know, his period at um, in at uh, Maruti Suzuki. Hyundai Motor Company is uh, a Korean car company. It owns companies like Kia, you know, Kia Motors. Yeah, Kia is owned by them. Um, Genesis is a luxury car company. Okay, they own this luxury Genesis. They also own Ionic. Ionic, as you know, is an electric, uh, basically say, you know, electric uh, vehicle maker. Ionic, Genesis, Kia, three car companies. Okay, three brands. And its CEO is Chung Ching Yu Sen. The chairman of Hyundai Motor Company is Chung Yu Sen. Okay. Ha, ah, look at the second one. Hindustan Motors. Hindustan Motors, uh, many people have, uh, you know, had told me that it is a government of India company. No, it is, a, it was a private sector company owned by the Chandrakant Birla Group. Chandrakant Birla Group. Aditi Birla, BK Birla, CK Birla, KK Birla, Yash Birla, plenty of Birla groups. And this is, this was one of the major Birla groups, CK Birla Group, Chandrakant Birla Group. 
The most famous product of this company was Ambassador Car. And uh, many of us grew up uh, with the idea with looking at Ambassador. We had a you know, couple of family cars, Ambassador cars, and they were the cars in those days. Okay, so Ambassador, you know, became outdated, um, you know, over a long period of time because people in India place a lot of, you know, focus on substance, a uh, lot of focus on style actually. Uh, ambassador came to be seen as a symbol of old times, not some, you know, not the modern times. So Hindu Sun Motors stopped doing well, uh, you know, in selling this car. So it finally sold the Ambassador brand to a French company called Peugeot. So today, Ambassador as a brand is owned by a French company called Peugeot. Fair? But remember, Ambassador was a private sector, you know, was made by a private sector company called Hindustan Motors. So, from there, Ashok Leyland. Ashok Leyland is India's second largest truck maker, second largest um, truck maker and this is the world's third largest bus maker. So, India's largest truck maker is Tata Motors, second is Ashok Leyland. Its CEO is Vipin Santhi. Vipin Santhi. And you know what? This is owned by the Hinduja group. Have you heard of this group? Hinduja group? Uh, as someone who is preparing for banking and related exams, you would know Indus Ind Bank. Indus Ind Bank is owned by Hinduja group. Indus Ind Bank. You must have heard of Gulf Oil. Major lubricant company. It's owned by the Hindujas. It's a huge, uh, you know, a Hinduja group is highly diversified, highly, you know, uh, what's say, pretty large. And there are four brothers, Sri Chand, Gopichand, Prakash and uh, Srikant, and um, they run the show. They run the show. These are Sindhis, uh, teetotalers. Uh, they were in Iran till 1979. Then the revolution happened there. From there, they moved to Switzerland, and now they reside both in Switzerland and Britain. So from Ashok Leyland, um, let's go to Aishar Motors. You know, this is the Royal Enfield Company, Aishar Motors. Siddhartha Lal, Siddhartha Lal, Siddhartha Lal is a CEO of this company. Hmm. Cool stuff. Name the 19th edition of the Indian and French Navy bilateral exercise held in the Arabian Sea in April 2021. Varuna. Varuna. Okay. Now I'll tell you a few, the names of a few naval exercises Indian Navy has participated in with foreign navies. So you could write, um, you know, um, naval exercises of India. Naval exercises of India. Okay. Uh, one navdex. Oh, sorry, I put a star mark. No? Navdex. Navdex in brackets. Naval defense exhibition. Naval defense exhibition. And and. IDEX, IDEX, International Defense Exhibition, International Defense Exhibition, an International Defense Exhibition, dash, with the United Arab Emirates, UAE, with UAE, with UAE. Cool. Navdex and IDEX. Okay, guys, that's one. So we mentioned two exercises, but both with the UAE. Next, uh, second one. Simtex. I'll just write the names here in caps. Simtex. Dash dash. Singapore. Singapore 
इंडिया सिंगापुर इंडिया थाईलैंड सिंगापुर इंडिया थाईलैंड ट्राई लैटरल ट्राई लैटर मीन थ्री साइडेड ट्राई लैटरल रिमेंबर लैट मीन साइड ट्राई मीन थ्री ट्राई लैटरल मैरिटाइम एक्सरसाइज मैरिटाइम एक्सरसाइज ट्राइलैटरल मैरिटाइम एक्सरसाइज नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट कॉर्पेट कॉर्पेट डैश इंडिया और या राइट इंडिया थाईलैंड इंडिया थाईलैंड कोऑर्डिनेटेड पेट्रोल पेट्रोल मींस मूविंग अराउंड टू चेक टू अवॉइड एनी अनप्लेसेंट यू नो अनप्लेसेंट इलीगल स्टफ सो कोऑर्डिनेटेड पेट्रोल सो बेसिकली इट्स ए चेकिंग कोऑर्डिनेटेड पेट्रोल सो कॉर पैट नेक्स्ट स्लिनेक्स नेश श्रीलंका इंडिया श्रीलंका इंडिया बायोलैटरल मैरिटाइम एक्सरसाइज श्रीलंका इंडिया नेवल एक्सरसाइज सिंपली राइट नेवल एक्सरसाइज नेक्स्ट वन मोर यू राइट जाइमेक्स Jimex dash Japan India Japan India maritime exercise maritime exercise maritime exercise next Pasex next Pasex Nash Passage exercise Passage exercise between India and Australia India and Australia Next नेक्स्ट राइट पूरा स्टार मार्क राइट इंद्रा इंद्रा विद रशिया विद रशिया इंद्रा विद रशिया मे बी यू कुड राइट कपल ऑफ यू नो कपल मोर समुद्र शक्ति बिकॉज आई वर्ड फाउंड द वर्ड मित्र शक्ति समुद्र शक्ति समुद्र शक्ति समुद्र शक्ति एंड कोमोडो यू नो कोमोडो ड्रैगन दे वेरी बिग इट लुक्स लाइक यू नो मीनी डायनासोर मूविंग अराउंड ऑन अर्थ इट्स अ मेजर क्रोकोटाइल इट्स अ मैच बिटवीन क्रोकोटाइल एंड अ डायनासोर या समुद्र शक्ति एंड कोमोडो डैश इंडोनेशिया इंडोनेशिया नेक्स्ट मलबार यू नो यू वुड नो दिस जापान ए दिस इज इंडोनेशिया एंड इंडिया इट्स टेकन फॉर ग्रांटेड यू आर डिस्कसिंग इंडियन नेवल एक्सरसाइजेस सो जापान इंडिया यूएस जापान इंडिया यूएस वन लास्ट ओके I like to share whatever I can. Um, Ipsamar, right? Naval exercise between naval exercise between 
इंडिया ब्राजील इंडिया ब्राजील एंड साउथ अफ्रीका एंड साउथ अफ्रीका इंडिया ब्राजील एंड साउथ अफ्रीका एंड साउथ अफ्रीका If you let the MAR would stand for maritime bilateral exercise. Nothing more than that. Okay, MA is MAR is maritime. That's how the name comes. But I have cut it short. Maritime ex. I simply asked you to write. I asked you to write uh, naval exercise between India, Brazil, and uh, what is that? South Africa. That's about it. So again, this was pretty comprehensive. Which nations will come together to form a cooperative forum named Net Zero Producers uh, Forum that aim to develop pragmatic net zero emission strategies and achieve net zero emissions by 2050? 2050. Now, um, I'm not going to discuss this question in any case. All of them have come together. So the idea is um, minimizing carbon, um, you know, emission, uh, greenhouse gas emission, and make sure that the carbon footprint is reduced. That's the idea, and as you would know that you know all of these five countries are major exporters of fossil fuels. You know the U.S. is both the you know major user and exporter of fossil fuels. So is Norway, one of the biggest uh, what we say petroleum producers. So is Saudi Arabia, Canada, and Qatar. Okay, so I can tell you the capitals: Ottawa. Maybe in the case of Canada, I can tell you the Prime Minister also, Justin Trudeau, Justin Trudeau. Canadian dollar is a currency. Canadian dollar. In the case of Norway, um, Oslo is the capital. Oslo, and. Um, It's a constitutional monarchy. There is a king, and of course, there is a, a parliamentary system wherein you have a council of ministers headed by the prime minister. Norway's um, prime minister is Erna Solberg. Erna Solberg. Okay. Erna Solberg. Chali. We discussed Qatar in the previous class, but anyway, चलो एक बार मैं आपको बता देता हूँ Qatar, Doha, for revision sake, Tamim bin Hamad. That's the name of the king. Tamim bin Hamad, and the currency is dinar. Hey hey hey, sorry sorry, real. The currency is real. It's Qatar, na? Yeah, real. Yeah. As far as the currency of Norway is concerned, it is krone. It is krone. Chali. Hmm. The 2020 Vaclav Havel Prize was awarded to the women's rights activist Lujan Alhutul of Saudi Arabia. This lady was put in jail for demanding a few things, including the you know right to drive for women. Now the government of Saudi Arabia had given the right to drive to women, but just around two months before this particular demand was considered, before the government of Saudi Arabia and the crown, that is the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, had taken this decision to give the right to vote to women, the right to drive. Without any guardian, male guardian, because right to drive was not allowed. Women were not allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia. You know, the the weird part is two months before um, the government was to give this uh, uh, right to women to drive on their own. You know, this lady was arrested, and the weird part is by even before that, the government had taken the decision to give this right of to right to drive. women the right to drive but she was jailed and she was in jail for a pretty long time and um, you may wonder if the government had decided to give uh, this right to all the saudi women then why was this person jailed for demanding that well the reason is pretty simple 
it's a predominantly male dominated society and the idea behind the arrest of you know um, you know what we say sorry the idea behind the arrest of lujain was that as a woman you cannot demand as a woman you cannot demand if we wish to give you a right it will be a person it will be a decision we will take that's what the government said so the crown prince said no demand should come from the bottom everything should be granted you know anything that comes from us shall be taken as a grant as a privilege so no demand from down you know you know what to say from the bottom only granting of wishes from the top i spent a lot of time learning about saudi arabia west asia actually american foreign policy eastern countries especially indonesia pakistan indonesia china vietnam and japan and i can tell you the world is in a churn and uh, saudi arabia is in deep trouble for a variety of reasons of course um who was vaclav havel well this guy was the president of czechoslovakia in those days there was a country in the late 1980s and early 90s there was a country called czechoslovakia it broke up later in 1993 to 2003 that is 1993 is the year czechoslovakia broke up okay into two parts czech republic and slovakia this vaclav havel became the president of czech republic he was there between 1993 and 2003 2003 and you should know my friends um this was a very peaceful revolution in the breaking up of the you know the, the communist country of czech czechoslovakia it was very peaceful no violence nothing two countries decided let's go our separate ways two parts of the country they went their separate ways without any violence this is also called sometimes called the velvet revolution one of the parts of velvet revolution smooth as velvet okay so president of um, this guy president of um, czech republic between 1993 and 2003 now um she apart from demanding you know what to say uh, lifting the ban she called for the lifting the ban on women driving she also fought for the ending of the system of male guardianship that is a woman on her own cannot walk out cannot move out of home for anything she every time she steps out of her home she has to be accompanied by a male you know some male especially uh, the male has to be either a brother or husband or the father so she called for abolition of that male guardianship uh, lifting the ban on women driving and of course um, you know uh, she also called on the government to tighten the laws that um, you know um laws against web abuse of women in homes it's a mad place it say mad place ha huh. saudi arabia's uh, capital is riyadh the king here is salman king salman and the guy who runs the country is the crown prince mohammed bin salman mbs Muhammad bin Mis son of Salman son of Salman he is a crown prince okay there is a beautiful book called blood and oil blood and oil maybe in the next class i'll show you that book it's on the life and work of um, you know mbs muhammad bin salman i think we discuss all these countries but anyway chat up fat fat we will look at um, you know um, currency rial okay saudi rial iraq capital baghdad capital baghdad prime minister mustafa al qadimi mustafa al qadimi hmm and the currency is iraqi dinar iraqi dinar iraqi dinar iran capital is tehran the you know the president's name hasan rouhani 
if you know it's a good thing to revise my friends it's, that's one name. the currency is real in brackets toman okay then oman oman's capitalist muscat and um, the king here is haytham bin tariq al sayyid that's the name of the you know ruling house the family that rules oman is al sayyid in saudi arabia it's al saud al saud jordan ah oh, so oman's currency is real real hmm mm, jordan jordan's um, capital is amman amman then the king is uh, abdullah the second abdullah the second and jordanian dinar is the currency jordanian dinar is a currency and uh, if you still wish to write as to what is the award given by now you would have understood it's about you know human rights defense of human rights you could write if in the end if you still want to write one line vaclav havel prize given to vaclav vaclav havel prize given to um outstanding contribution given to given for given for outstanding contribution outstanding contribution for promotion of human rights for promotion and defense of human rights for promotion and defense of human rights in civil society civil society c i v i l civil society The World Immunization Week 2021 was observed from the 24th of April to 30th of April. The theme of the World Immunization Week is vaccines bring us closer. I checked this website and I found this you know you know um they in one sentence highlighted what vaccination does. It's you know the it said that vaccination brings us closer to the people, goals, moments that all of us greatly cherish isn't it if we are vaccinated we are much safer you yeah, know than without being vaccinated so as vaccine you know when we are vaccinated you know we can be closer to the people we love we can engage in activities that we love and we can uh, you know live healthily that's the idea behind this and if you are a person who are, is watching you know um, since you are watching this i would suggest you when got vaccinated yet please go ahead va get vaccinated forget all those people who tell you not to get vaccinated because of side effects all vaccines have had side effects when you were young when a little fellow you took polio vaccine diphtheria all kinds of vaccines and you had fever you always had fever okay so two days fever is still better and that is a healthy fever is still better than unhealthy you know uh, corona yeah panchayati raj system national panchayati raj system is our day it is the national day of the panchayati raj system in india and is celebrated as ministry of panchayati raj on dash annually april 24th april 24th um i want you to write um, because why april 24th you could write this why april 24th why april 24th dash because on this day on this day comma in 1993 yeah on this day comma in 1993 comma the 73rd constitutional amendment the 73rd constitutional amendment in brackets focus on panchayati raj focus on panchayati raj was was passed or was adopted was adopted 
the Constitution Amendment Act 1970 uh, sorry um, the 73rd Constitution Amendment Act was adopted on this day in 1993 it was the 11th schedule if I'm not wrong yeah 11th schedule okay uh, you know Panchayati Raj in India is three tier it's a three tier tier means level just a car you know you have train three tier three tier AC two tier AC it's not tire it's tier tier means level so you are in two AC you are two berths and um, in three tier three AC three tier AC you are three berths that's it levels so you have at um, village level you have gram panchayat gram sabha or gram panchayat okay uh, mandal or block level you have uh, what is called uh, mandal samiti mandal or block samiti mandal or block samiti and the last one jilla jilla parishad jilla parishad jp so there is a you know village panchayat number of villages come together to form one mandal block samiti mandal or block samiti all the mandal block samitis form the jilla parishad that's how it is. Chika, it's a three tier system. Hmm. So, identify the Supreme Court judge who passed away recently after prolonged illness, Mohan Shantana Gudar. So, we are not going to discuss this question. Okay. He passed away recently. And, uh, with an objective of securing a better future for Ladakhi youth, which of the following forces have recently signed an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding with HPCL, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited, and NIDO, which is the National Integrity for Educational Development Organization. I was surprised to know this organization actually. National Institution, uh, sorry, National Integrity, National Integrity and educational development organization you could write this national integrity and educational development organization okay that's nido so they have signed the mou with um, you know in between nido and hbcl and who has signed this indian army has signed it to ignite ladakhi minds what is this project about you could write ladakhi ignited minds project ladakh ignited minds project please write this okay so dash um a full time 12 month a full time a full time 12 month full full time 12 month residential program residential program to guide ladakhi youth to guide ladakhi youth for various engineering for various engineering and medical entrance exams across India for engineering and what is that medical entrance exams across India it's a good project very good project it would provide plenty of opportunities to Ladakhi young people to be able to sit for exams prepared of course and uh, you know well prepared and uh, do better in those exams so it promotes employment opportunity greater integration all that stuff it brings see a person who's who has a stable job brings a better quality of life to the family better quality of life would mean that people eat more nutrition better nutri better food better nutritious food uh, have access to a cleaner environment Pl plenty of you know advantages like better health care okay. so who are these guys here um, central reserve police for crpf you could write crpf dash who is the head of crpf kuldeep singh this uh, i went to the website of crpf and i found this spelling 
K U L D I E P Kuldeep Singh the director general of CRPF okay next indian air force chief rakesh kumar singh bhadauria rakesh kumar singh bhadauria next hmm indian army manoj mukund naravani manoj mukund naravani border security force dash rakesh asthana rakesh asthana rakesh asthana rakesh asthana next look at national security guard mm, this nsg is headed by m a ganapati m a ganapati Who of the following authors has announced his forthcoming publication titled The Living Mountain, A Fable for Our Times, to be released in January 2022? Amitav Ghosh, one of my all-time favorite writers. Yeah, three and four are my favorite writers, and I would want you to look at this book title that I have from, I've kept some books here so that I could show you why you should uh, look at this book. So this is a bookmarker, <laughs> my daughter made. This is a book you could write The Hungry Tide. Hungry Tide. I would strongly recommend this book to anyone who wishes to read a beautiful love story, a story of human beings uh, who come together in the most unlikeliest of circumstances and those who speak in language they don't understand otherwise, um, but they speak in language through minds, through their emotions and uh, Ultimately, the story ends in a tragedy. This is a story that is set in the Sundarbans. The Sundarbans. You know, Sundarbans is a 10,000 square kilometer, you know, mangrove forested area in Bangladesh and India. And um, there is this uh, scientist uh, who's, who's, who's um, pursuing research in um, river dolphins, you know, in the field of river dolphins. And she comes there. That's a setologist. She comes there to pursue this research and she hires a boatman called Fakir, forget about it, okay, the boatman and uh, this boatman is illiterate and, but he knows the, the the entire delta region, the Sundarban region like the back of his hand. So she, her, he services are hired H-I-R-D by this lady and they go around and they are there for a few days around, you know, and I can tell you friend, friends that when I first read this book, I was like captivated. There is a storm, what happens in a storm and uh, what happens to the two of them is a story of this book. It's a beautiful book. Beautiful book. I'm like this, I love books. I love, I really, I'm mad about books. Uh, this is another novel, The Glass Palace by Amitav Ghosh. This is a story of Myanmar. Okay. Um, so what happens when the royal, you know, when the British come to occupy this place and uh, these guys lose power? What is it? That's a story. Very good book. The Glass Palace. You should read Ghosh. Ghosh is amazing. Awesome. There are a lot of, in fact, I have all of his books. Autograph books also. It's not because I have them you should read. You should read for your own benefit to become better, to get an insight into the world around us. We should learn so as to become, you know, uh, better thinkers, better, you know, being able to talk sense. It is very important to have ideas to be able to, you know, speak. Okay. You look at choice one, Sanjeev Sanyal. Heard of this guy. This guy, you know what? He is the principal economic advisor in the Ministry of Finance, Government of India. 
principal economic advisor in the Ministry of Finance, Government of India. And I would want everyone, if you don't want to read Amitav Ghosh, no issue. Read this book. It's called Land of the Seven Rivers. Land of the Seven Rivers. This book, Land of the Seven Rivers, would tell you the story of India through geography. You know, the seven rivers are Indus, you know, Brahma, uh, Brahmaputra, Ganga, Saraswati, Narmada, Krishna, Kaveri. So please read this. Magnificent work. He is what? He is he's an expert on geography and history, though he is an economist by training. And he is what? He has been named among the world's greatest, um, you know, what? Do you know? He, what was he before he became the chief economist here, uh, principal economic advisor to the government of India's Minister of Finance? He was the chief global strategist for Deutsche Bank, one of the world's biggest banks. Not an ordinary guy. Okay, read. So, Land of the Seven Rivers. Land of the Seven Rivers. Jumpa Lehari, um, this lady is, um, you know, she's a fabulous writer. I have only one book, one of her books and someone had taken it, never returned the book. It's called The Interpreter of Maladies. Interpreter of Maladies. Hmm. Her actual name is Nilanjana. Okay, Nilanjana. But then uh, Jumpa was a nickname she was given by her parents while at school. And the teacher adopted that and that struck and today she's called, you know, Jumpa Lehari. Otherwise, it's Nilanjana Sudeshna Jumpa. Yeah, the name, nickname. So this is a good book, Interpreter of Maladies. There is, um, she's written another book, The Namesake, which is a film, which was made into a film. I think it's star taboo someone basically. Yeah. Uh, Salman Rushti, terrific chap, one of the greatest writers of modern age. And he's written plenty of books. His latest book is this. You may get this question. You know, uh, Q. Q. It's pronounced Key Shot. Key Shot. I have all of his books and I can show you. Two, one book I can show you. It's a terrific book. It's a, it's a light hearted story. Luca and the Fire of Life. Luca and the Fire of Life. See, um, these are the kinds of books we should read so that we get um, familiar with the language, with different voices around the world and different perspectives, different insights. Okay. Even if you don't read big things, read small things, but read, get ideas. Hmm? You have a long life ahead, a long career ahead. The more the ideas, the better. Now, when we read, our language ability improves, our ability to talk you know, improves and we have a lot more confidence because we know we have done the homework, we have read, we are informed, you know, we have language ability. So all these things will work. Okay. Uh, Kiran Desai, uh, she is a very good writer. You could write one book, uh, uh, the name of one book, which won the Booker Prize, Hala Balu in the Guava Orchard. Hala Balu. Uh, L-O Allah Balu in the Guava in Guava means Amrud you pronounce this as Guava not Gawa Guava Guava Orchard Amrud ke baag mein Dhamal like. <laughs> her mother is uh, of course uh, was the great Anita Desai who was shortlisted on the book three times but never could make it to the final prize Okay. Who won a record extending Barcelona Open tennis title recently? Well, Rafael Nadal. Rafael Nadal. Uh, he belongs to Spain and uh, Nadal is considered to be one of the greatest of ten, you know, greatest tennis players of modern age. Um, you know what? Federer, Djokovic, Nadal are considered the greatest. The greatest, and among these, the two, you know, one and five are considered gentlemen, and they run a lot of charities. Lot of charities. Rafael Nadal won the tournament. Barcelona is in Spain, as you would know, and this guy 
you know was um, the winner here he defeated this guy who was a runner up he belongs to greece he belongs to greece stefanos tsitsipas yeah. dominic thiem if i am not wrong he belongs to austria top 5 in the world djokovic serbia currently world number 1 federer uh, switzerland so this tournament you know uh, we have had uh, the winner nadal was the winner and uh, sitsipas was the runner up barcelona remember is in spain india has been ranked dash in the chandler good government index um, 2021 which classifies 104 countries in terms of government capabilities and outcomes government capabilities and outcomes now this is a very dicey subject uh, you know the understanding of um, what a government should be doing is quite different from you know in the west and our you know in our part of the world but anyway our rank was 49th 49th and you could write this title government chandler good government index good government index uh top 5 top 5 Finland one was Finland two Switzerland three Singapore Switzerland let me write in full hmm four Netherlands countries with tiny populations five denmark top five finland switzerland singapore uh, what is it uh, netherlands and denmark consider you know, they have the best government government systems um india's rank 49th 104 ranks the last rank 104 rank venezuela Vene Jo Vene Jo Okay Which film was edged the best picture at the 93rd Academy Awards Oscars 2020 and I don't know if we have had this question in the past but anyway let's repeat and so that we remember better Nomadland Nomadland best picture you could write this um title 93rd Academy Awards Oscars 2021 okay best picture nomad land nomad means someone who is a banjara gypsy doesn't have a settled existence this best picture what you call best film so best picture here best director chloe chao for nomad land for nomad land nomad land next best actor even if it's a repeat please write so that you remember better for the, you know for an exam best actor the great anthony hopkins anthony hopkins for the father the film the father dash oldest actor to win oscar to win oscar aged 83 aged 83 oldest actor to win oscar aged 83 next best actress best actress 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 francis mcdormand very good actors and she won it uh, for nomadland for nomadland 
सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू गिव यू द नेम्स ऑफ चलो एक काम करते हैं बेस्ट सपोर्टिंग एक्टर डेनियल कलुआ फॉर दिस फिल्म जुडास इन द ब्लैक मसिया मैसेया मैसेया इज मैसेंजर समवन हु वुड कम यू नो विद अ मैसेज टू डिलीवर पीपल फ्रॉम सिंस सो दैट्स बेस्ट एक्टर बेस्ट एक्ट्रेस बेस्ट एक्ट्रेस बेस्ट सपोर्टिंग एक्ट्रेस आई एम सॉरी गाइस बेस्ट सपोर्टिंग एक्ट्रेस यून व्हाट्स द नेम यार हां यू नो दीस काइंड्स ऑफ नेम्स आर डिफिकल्ट टू रिमेंबर आई एम सॉरी फॉर दिस बट आई हैव नॉर्मली फाइंड आई मीन आई हैव नेवर हर्ड ऑफ हर बिफोर दिस सो यून यू जंग is you know she won the best supporting actress award for minari for minari minari okay just couple of more prizes um you could write best documentary best short documentary best short documentary collect best short documentary collect next best documentary dash film it's called a feature film actually best documentary dash film uh, feature film my octopus teacher my octopus teacher my octopus teacher this is for short typically short length documentary this is for you know long or feature film directory and the last prize i want you to write is this uh, right um see there is uh, this prize for given for humanitarian uh, service okay you please write this um jean you can say john also it's french so john has short humanitarian award john has short humanitarian award two winners um what is that motion picture in front motion picture motion picture and and tv fund it's a normal edition motion picture and tv fund television fund second tyler perry tyler perry theek hai chali lot of it Which film won the best international feature film at the 93rd Academy Awards? It was another round. The director was Thomas Winterberg. Uh, this is my to watch list actually. Thomas Winterberg. Okay. Next. to improve governance in the banking sector the reserve bank of india has recently capped terms for managing directors in charge chief executive officers of banks in this context which of the following statements is are true tenure of mds and me ceos of private banks will be capped at 15 years the upper age limit for md ceos and whole time directors will now be 70 years higher in higher upper age limit has been increased individual um, you know any individual will be eligible for reappointment as an md ceo or uh, whole time director in the same bank after minimum gap of 3 years mm -hmm. all of them all of them the idea is to improve governance otherwise see someone's there for a very long time it leads to you know what to say vested interest that's how things work India is among six teams that have qualified to the women's T20 competition of the 2022 Commonwealth Games. In this context, which country will host the 2022 Commonwealth Games? See, Commonwealth Games typically, you know, see the participation of 54 Commonwealth countries and territories. Not all of them are countries. 
For example, within this, you would find England fielding a separate team from Wales, from Scotland. Okay, all of them have separate teams. Now, I need to, I need you to understand. I'll, maybe in the next class, I'll tell you the difference between England and all that. I need you to understand here that almost all of these Commonwealth countries have been members of the British Empire. They were part at one point, some point rather, were part of the British Empire. They were ruled by Britain in one way or the other. Now, 2022 will be held in Birmingham. That's a city. Birmingham in England. Birmingham, England. Okay? So that's it. So, I can't Now, 2026 has not come out. They, they, they had to announce the, the, the host city. But I can tell you a little about Asian Games. Because uh, in the previous class, I think I mentioned it somewhere. But I'm not very sure if I mentioned the entire list. So, 2022 will be Hangzhou, China. Hangzhou, China. Okay. I normally put a star mark or some symbol to differentiate. Then 2026, Aichi Nagoya, Japan, Japan, Aichi Nagoya, Japan, 2030, Doha, capital of Qatar, Qatar, 2034, Riyadh, capital of Saudi Arabia, capital of Saudi Arabia, yes, with which nation has Microsoft partnered to build the most powerful supercomputer in the world to forecast weather and climate changes, United Kingdom, um, as of now the world's fastest supercomputer, most powerful supercomputer in the world is Fugaku, Fugaku, Japan. This is the world's fastest supercomputer. Okay. And the world's, uh, sorry, India's fastest. So this is world. India's fastest supercomputer is Param Siddhi AI, Artificial Intelligence. Param Siddhi, not Siddha, Param Siddhi AI. This is the global rank is 63. Global rank is 63, but India's fastest supercomputer. Okay. You know what does Param stand for? Parallel machine. Parallel machine. We can say machine also. Para, yeah, Param. Param means, you know, forever basically. Most, the most, the strongest, invincible. I mean, something that is beyond conquering basically forever okay um, Microsoft uh, I'll just tell you about Microsoft Microsoft's uh, headquartered in a place called Redmond Washington Redmond is a city a small town actually not city it's in the American state of Washington which is on the west coast of America on the border with Canada and um, this is the world's biggest software company. Its turnover last year was $143 billion. That's a lot of money. $143 billion. It's the world's largest software maker. World's largest software maker. This company was started by two persons. Paul Allen and William Gates. William is Bill Gates. Will and Bill. Remember, William is a name, actual name of a guy called Bill. Bill is a nickname. William Gates. They started this company in 1975. Currently, the CEO of this company is Satya Narayana Nadella. Separate words. Satya Narayana Nadella. Satya Narayana Nadella. Okay. Hmm. That's Microsoft. But these choices, I think, uh, I've been discussing, uh, you you would know about all these countries, except for maybe Philippines. Philippines is a archipelago. It's a, you know, it comprises a group of islands. Manila is the capital. And um, this was ruled by Spain for a long time, 1568 to 1898. 
Remember what? Philippines was ruled by Spain for 330 years. I know this story because I am fascinated by history. <laughs> Philippines, um, it's named after King Philip II of Spain. In fact, the name Philippines comes from the name of a Spanish king. Um, the president is Rodrigo Duterte. It's Spanish, so you pronounce like that. Duterte. Rodrigo Duterte. Okay. And um, Peso is a currency. Peso. Enough. Just take part. Fatafat. Jakarta, Indonesia. Jakarta. Um, that's the capital. Joko Widodo is the prime president. Widodo. Currency is Rupiah. One more thing you could write, world's largest archipelago. Archipelago, is a, uh, archipelago means group of islands. World's largest archipelago. It has more than 17,000 islands. More than 17,000 islands. So, okay. Which insurance company has launched the insurance SME insurance SME Insure to provide financial security to micro, small and medium enterprises. Alliance Insurance Group, it's a portal, it's a website that provides, um, you know, this kind of services. There's hardly anything to discuss except that I can tell you that one company, this Ergo is a German company if I'm not wrong, it's a, yeah, it's a part of another insurance company HDFC Ergo is a joint venture between HDFC financial services company in India and Ergo which is a British company sorry a German company okay and remember my friends that you know its CEO is Ritesh Kumar Ritesh Kumar Ritesh Kumar okay the minister for small from micro small and medium enterprises is Nitin Gadkari Nitin Gadkari Nitin Gadkari is also the minister for, you know, um, what's a um, roadways, yeah, minister for roadways, highways and all that stuff. Simply roadways, that's it. Okay, that's how you remember things. You don't have to push yourself very. You don't have to stretch yourself much. Okay, next. I can read Cipri. Cipri is. An organization based in a place called Stockholm. Stockholm is the capital of Sweden. Stockholm Institute of Peace Research. Okay. Stockholm International Institute. Sorry. International. International Peace Research Institute. Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. Every year they come out with this, you know, diary, I mean, ranking, a, you know, a report on the, you know, trends in global, uh, you know, military expenditure, military budgets and everything. So this year's budget and um, the highest has been spent by United States, 778. China, they say, is, see, China has... China never gives us clarity. It's a country of opaqueness, no transparency. But you know, last year's budget in 2019, the budget was 261, and they spent in you know 252 last year. That is what they are telling us. We don't really know. Number two, China. You know, this is billion dollars, my friends. Okay, ha. Huh. India is in the third place with um, you know Russia. I think is in the third. You know, India which should be in the third place. 73 billion dollars. 73 billion dollars uh, fourth is russia 61.7 so make it 62 62 fifth is uk with 59.2 so make it 59 this so these are the five countries with the highest military expenditures united states see 778 is three times China's budget, but remember, China spends much more than it what it tells us. Okay, so India spends uh, about um, three, you know, you could say a little over, 
you know, 30% of um, China's defense budget. Less than 30%, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Cap is huge, because, but China has a lot of money. We don't have that money. Okay. We'll discuss this is, uh, which bank has decided to restrict its customers from withdrawing money from non EMV ATM? What is EMV? You first write EMV. Uh, I never knew this before today. Okay. Um, Europe MasterCard Visa. Okay. Visa. Europe MasterCard Visa. Okay, that is EMV. Now you write uh, EMV ATM. You just write EMV ATM. First write EMV ATM dash uses 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 a smart chip uses a smart chip uh, uses a smart chip instead of it magnetic strip instead of a magnetic strip instead of a magnetic strip to read to read and store data to read and store data to process a transaction to process a transaction process a transaction so that's how it is okay now a lot of cards um, uh, these days don't have you know earlier the there was no smart chip i wish i could actually show you cards now maybe in the next class i'll show you okay um some cards have a smart chip some have a magnet strip on the back of it so when you insert a card the strip the magnet the black strip it stores all the data containing you know, contain, you know about your financial transactions and everything else about your authenticity and everything so when you store you know when you push this in you know it reads all the data normally that's called a non emv atm okay it is it uses the magnetic strip to read now an emv card basically would use a smart chip use a smart chip so Punjab National Bank now says every card, every of every, you know, if our one of our customers does not have a you know chip card, they should use a chip card. They should get a chip card from one of our you know, from our branches and use it. Otherwise, they can no longer use their ATM cards, debit cards. That's the idea. Hmm? You write now non EMV ATM, non EMV ATM. So now chip cards are necessary that's what they are saying smart chips are necessary next non emv atm dash read data reads data through magnetic strips through magnetic strips and do not and do not hold the atm card do not hold the atm card during during the transaction during the transaction during the transaction you must observe this when you insert the card it reads and then gives the back the card some machines do that so these are non emv atms basically so they don't have a smart chip kind of thing so punjab national bank is restricting this and those of you who don't know atm the first atm came to india in uh, 1960 19, sorry, 1987 it was hsbc bank hsbc hong kong and shankar banking corporation brought its the first atm to india in uh, 1987 that was in mumbai that was in mumbai 20 years earlier the world's first atm came in that was in london okay. Who headed the expert committee on primary cooperative banks to examine issues and suggest a roadmap for strengthening the sector? NS Vishnath and I went through this. Um, you know, um, they are talking about um, see primary cooperative banks in urban areas are uh, financially not very strong. So, 
RBI is a little worried because a lot of people um, put in money in these banks and all. So the idea is that um, you know if this kind of a committee would come up with certain recommendations um, uh, and also discuss, also you know uh, evaluate the measures that the RBI had taken in the past and their impact on these banks in the last five years. So study what has already been done and recommend a new st a few new steps for the future. That's the idea. And this N.S. Vishwanathan is an, an ex-RBI deputy governor. Uh, Harsh Kumar Bhanwala is the ex-chairman of uh, RBI, uh, NABAD. NABAD. There is hardly anything to discuss. The Corporate India Risk Index has been launched by ICICI Lombard. ICICI Lombard. ICICI Lombard is a Canadian company. Lombard is a Canadian company. It's owned by a company called... Uh, okay, you don't require that. Fairfax. But anyway... Lombard is a Canadian company, okay, and they came to India, set up a joint venture with ICICI Group, and um, in, that is in general insurance, not life, general insurance. They have launched this Corporate India Risk Index. You could write what is this. Corporate India Risk Index dash will help will help companies will help companies understand will help companies understand. The level of risk, the level of risk that their business, that their business is facing, that their business is facing and, and help in, help in developing, help in developing a risk aversion plan a risk aversion plan risk aversion means decreasing the risk so it will help companies understand look these are the risks your business faces and then come up with a plan that look this is how you can reduce the risk that's the idea corporate india risk index so it's icci lombard and um, its ceo is bhargav das gupta bhargav das gupta Bhargav Das Gupta. SBI General Insurance uh, Prakash Chandra Kandpal. Prakash Chandra Kandpal. Okay, Prakash Chandra Kandpal. Anything else that you would, should know? Not as well. Yeah. Too much of stuff these days. With which of the following banks did SBI, the State Bank of India, tie up to use the bank's blockchain technology to speed up overseas transactions? Uh, JP Morgan, this is one of the world's biggest banks, one of top five in America, top three actually. Okay, one, two, and Citibank would be the top three in America. Okay, so one, two, three would be called the big three in America. Um, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, I'll just tell you about JP Morgan. JP Morgan, um, what is it? Um, it's headquartered in New, De you know, in, in uh, uh, New York City, and its CEO is a guy called very, you know, very famous man, Jamie Dimon. He has been there for over a decade now, more than a decade actually. Jamie Dimon, Bank of America, yeah, very, very, very big bank. It's. it's Chairman is CEO is Brian uh, Moynihan. Moynihan. Brian Moynihan. Citibank, just one last. Jay Fraser. I think we discussed her name uh, a few days back. Jay Fraser. Jay Fraser. Which bank has launched smart up uh, Unnati for mentoring women entrepreneurs by women leaders at the bank? Women entrepreneurship is, um, you know, is a very big thing these days and um, the government and private sector is doing their most uh, to push women entrepreneurs, their, their you know, their, um, their ventures into doing better. So, um, to do better. HDFC Bank, the CEO is Sashi Jagdishan. Sashidhar Jagdishan Jagdishan In some places you will find this Jagdishan Okay, <laughs> it's the same thing State Bank of India, you know, is India's largest bank and this is India's 
largest private sector bank by assets. By assets, the largest private sector bank in India is HDFC Bank. The largest overall bank in India is SBI, State Bank of India. Its chairman is Dinesh Khara. Um, Axis Bank, Amitabh Chaudhary. His tenure has just been renewed, Amitabh Chaudhary. I say the bank Sandeep Bakshi, Sandeep Bakshi, I say the bank Sandeep Bakshi, Kendra Bank, um, LV Prabhakar, Lingam Venkat Prabhakar, Lingam Venkat Prabhakar, Lingam Venkat Prabhakar, yes. Which bank has launched a range of wearable contactless payment, dev payment devices under the brand wear and pay? I mean, you could wear it's like I have seen this actually. You could wear it on a smartwatch and show it uh, next to a, a wireless device, you know, like a you know card swiping machine, everything, and you could pay through this. Weird world. <laughs> bank of Baroda, one of India's largest banks, and this bank, um, I'll just tell you one uh, bank of Baroda. Okay, since I mentioned it. Sanjeev Chadda, Sanjeev Chadda. Uh, we have discussed this in the past and uh, Central Bank of India, the chairman is Matam Venkat Rao. Matam Venkat Rao. Venkat Rao. Union Bank of India, Raj Kiran Rai. Axis Bank we just mentioned. DBS Bank is uh, Singapore based bank. This is uh, Piyush Gupta. Piyush Gupta. It's a Singapore based bank. Very large bank. Oh, that's about it. Yeah. Very long show. Yeah, it's for into fires. Thanks as usual for being here and uh, I hope you learned a few good things and we took comprehensive notes on a few issues Please revise the notes over your meal, okay? And from uh, today, there is no IPL also. Sad. But then I wasn't watching it anyway. Have a lot of fun. Stay curious.